If you're new to Albion Online and want to play on the East Coast server when it launches on March 15th, I have a video just for you. This is the most reliable start to Albion Online East. Please note that this is for the fresh start of Albion Online East, or if you want to do what's called a Zero to Hero Challenge or an Iron Man where you don't rely on anyone else. If you want to have a better guide for Albion Online West, or possibly six months to one year after East launches, then check out this guide here, which is the Best Possible Start for New Players Albion Online Beginner's Guide 2023 Edition. Just search my channel or search this title right here. Look for these thumbnails and that will set you straight. Let's cover what the guide is. This guide is going to teach you how to play and profit and grow your character without any risky content. This means this video will not tell you ever to go to a black zone or a red zone. You will do no market flipping and you will not gamble your money. There is zero usage of markets in this guide. However, you can use markets if you want to save time, depending on how the market is. I cannot pre predict the market on the East Coast server, but I think it's going to be heavily controlled by cartels and whales. This is one of the possibly cheapest build in the entire game that will allow you to do almost all of the content completely solo, including some content that is designed for groups. This build and this guide will allow you to get items that are easy to craft and easy to maintain with low repair bills, and you will have insanely high sustain if you play on a controller or possibly a phone or you're just brand new to video games and you don't have the hand-eye coordination to actually dodge attacks. This will allow you to almost never die. Now let's discuss what this guide is not. This is not the fastest way to do anything or the best way. This is more of a, a jack-of-all-trades kind of guide that will allow you to do everything good, quickly, and cheaply, but in the end of the day, someone with max spec with a different build will be able to do the solo dungeon content faster, and there are slightly stronger PvP builds, but not by much. If you're wanting to just run budget sets and clean people out of gear, this is the build to build up on the new server, because it's just so cheap and so effective, unless the person you're playing against knows what they're doing, and has lots of experience. Also, this does not involve playing with friends, or in a group, or in a guild, or zerging anything, or credit card swiping, aka paying to win. You will spend no money. This is completely free to play. This guide will not have you spend a single dime of your real-life money. Now, you can do this. You can follow this guide and join a guild and be a duo or a trio or whatever. That's fine, but this is designed specifically for solo players. Also, this guide does not skip the grind, as in you will have to play and do the same thing for several hours. That means gathering. That means mob grinding. It is an MMORPG. There is no real way to skip this grind. You will be able to do the grind more efficiently as you play, and also... Unlike my other guides, this does not involve any islands. You will not be purchasing your own guilds and furnishing islands or having anything to do with laborers, at least not for a long time. Because SBI nerfed guild islands, they now cost 1 million silver, so they are just too expensive for a brand new player on a brand new server. Before we begin the guide, let's go over the build. That way, more experienced players can understand what this video is about and share their comments below. The build is the Battle Axe, one of the cheaper one-handed axe weapons that deals tremendous one-handed range damage with lifesteal, a self-heal, a lifesteal passive. This allows you to chase players, run from players. This is great for AoE farming group dungeons. This thing is an anti-healer weapon if you do group PvP. It is just very powerful with damage over time. Melee cleave attacks, uh, three in a row actually, and a root this weapon is an all-around baller for everything in the game. You can solo outposts with this. You can solo group dungeons and static dungeons with this. You can do all sorts of wild things. This is one of the safest builds in the entire game to play. So if you are high ping or you're disabled or you're just new to video games, this build will keep you alive and you will be very difficult to kill. For your armor, you'll use Hellion Jacket. If you want a budget version, use Mercenary Jacket, which is what you'll be using when you start your character because Hellion Jacket won't be available. You want Lifesteal Aura and Balanced Mind as the passive. 
Now, any cloth boot works. I'm just wearing sandals of purity, but any cloth boot will have the energetic sprint ability, which uh, this build is mana intensive, so you need a cloth boot to restore your mana. Thetford Cape for more damage. You can use whatever cape you want. Hunter Hood is amazing for PvP and PvE. The Hunter Hood allows you to reflect 100% of the damage you take as magic damage, but it also reduces the damage you take. So you uh, basically... An enemy skills become your skills for four seconds. And what you do is you just pop this. The enemy uses their big nuke damage. They dump all their cooldowns on you right away. They're at half HP, and any damage they did, you just heal right up with multiple abilities and lifesteal food. I'm using roast pork in this example, but you do want to use uh, pure mist snapper if you can afford it. Also healing potion because this is a sustained build. So the build looks something like this. Basically, uh, the way... Uh, battle axe works is you have three cleave attacks and a, the third one will root targets your w spell allows you to run faster deal more damage and your e spell will do a ranged attack and the second one will heal you based on the damage that you deal the more bleed stacks on a target the more damage and the more healing you receive so essentially you just stack up three bleeds on whoever you're attacking they're going to start running away because you're obviously winning the fight you're going to be able to chase them down with your w and your boots ability which is a low cooldown and it lets you run pretty dang quick, 80% for 5 seconds, and you can snipe enemies, you can poke them from afar if you're low on health, you can run into enemy mobs and use your lifesteal jacket, you can also just use this offensively on other players, and the lower health you are, the more this heals. It heals a tremendous amount the higher tier you get. So if you're doing like solo mists and you're fighting like two people, you just run into a group of 5 or 6 mobs, you use this armor, if they don't purge it, you immediately win because you'll be at full HP. Your E spell will massively, massively heal you a huge chunk of your health. Uh, let's see here. That heals eight, almost 800. Uh, eight, that's like one-fourth of my HP almost. Uh, also, you know, every atta auto attack you're doing, you're, you're life-stealing. If I eat this food, that's even more life-steal. The bleeds over time will give you life-steal if you have food active. You're, again, you're hyper-mobile. You can run very quickly. You can attack from range. This build does absolutely everything. You can face tank and face roll group dungeons. You, it's just not as fast as a shadow caller build, but it is almost three to four times cheaper. Even if you went full 8.3, 8.4 battle axe, these things are cheap. This 8.3, this is a masterpiece battle axe. It's only 5.8 million. If I want the equivalent for a shadow caller, it's 30 million. All right, so it is just, it does the same thing. You don't need maximum specs either. You do not need to have 100 specs in all of your axes and all of your armors to deal with group dungeons either. You can just have like 80 to 90 spec in a, in a Hellion jacket, you know, maybe 75 to 80 in, in Battle Axe, just enough to unlock rending, Raging Blades, and there you go. You are all set for group dungeon solo farming. It's not as fast as Shadowcaller, like I said, but it is, you are way safer and less likely to get downed by mobs. It also lets you solo bosses. Even more safer than a low IP druidic staff if you have high IP. So you don't even need to level a druidic staff at all with this build. It's also much cheaper and it's you can craft it yourself. You can basically craft the entire set yourself and I'm going to teach you how to do that in this guide video. Except for the Hellion Jacket, you will possibly have to use the market for that one. But that's way, way later. You'll be using Mercenary Jacket, which is just as good for PvE purposes. Not so much for PvP purposes. Furthermore, if you don't believe that this build is PvP viable, let's look at last week's top PvP fame. Uh, there is a Twitch streamer named Mean Shog, and he's been tearing up. He is ranked 16th as of last week, and he is using this build to just absolutely slap. You can see here he's using an 8.1, okay, and it's only 800,000 silver, which may seem like a lot as a new player. It's not, because, like, uh, everything here is pretty 600k for the armor, the helmet is 300k, the boots are 220k, the, this is all around a cheap build, Moizak 320k, uh, now he had a pork omelet there, but he does have pure mist on swap, so if you want to see, like, the murder ledger, it's just, it's just pure profit, this dude is making just an absolute killing, yeah, he does die sometimes, he dies to counter builds, or he, uh, he plays when he's heavily fatigued, like streaming 16 hours a day and stuff, but he is just slapping. He is slaying. He is making huge oodles of profit. I have uh, checked this guy out for at least a week now, and he made about 60 million in that time. Just killing people with this cheap build. It is probably one of the cheapest 
uh, builds that I found that allows you to f basically farm players if that's what you want to do in the game. And that's the goal of most people in the game is to get to the point where they can just kill other people and make a profit. Okay, let's get into the guide. Now, I won't teach you how to do the tutorial, but when you get to the part where you need to craft or buy gear, buy the following. The Novice's Broadsword, the Mercenary Hood, the Mercenary Jacket, and the Scholar Sandals. You can also pick up a Novice's Shield or a book. It doesn't matter. You just need one or the other. These don't really matter while you have them worn. You're not going to be gaining fame towards them, okay? Also, don't eat your carrot soups. And uh, at some point, craft a bag because it will make the next steps much easier. Proceed through the tutorial until you get to this part called a Distraction, which says... Call the ship by lighting a signal fire. To light the signal fire, you'll need to step into this circle and this torch will be lit up, a boat will appear, and this doorway will open. The reason you do not want to proceed at this point is because as soon as you cross through this doorway, you can't go back. You are locked out of newbie tutorial island forever, and we have much things that we need to do here. We're going to be spending the next three hours here getting our character tip-top shape so that we can proceed to the next zone very quickly. Step number one, and again, all of these steps, I want you to listen to all of them before you begin because you can kind of do all of them at the same time. So the first thing is you need to kill mobs to get the Journeyman Warrior to 20% out of 100. If you don't know what this means, I'm going to teach you right now. Push B to access your destiny board. It will be put right here in the center every single time. We're going to follow this left line here to trainee fighter. And then we're going to go down and left on this line where my cursor is kind of touching. Down to this sword icon which is called journeyman warrior. You need to have this yellow bar filled up 20% of the way out of 100 or... 1,000 out of 5,000 experience points. What we will do later on is immediately level this up, which will unlock the battle axe uh, and the shield, which we won't be using the shield, but don't worry, we'll unlock the other thing later. Now, the end of the build will be a Moizak, which is in the mage tree. If we go here to the destiny board, we go to training fighter, we follow this line all the way up to unlock journeyman mage. You can do this if you want to now, but it's easier to just do it later because... Uh, what you want to do is unlock this Tome Fighter so that we can start wearing a Moizak. However, this item here, the Demonic Jawbone, will not be available for quite some time on the East server. So you, it, it, it's requi it requires advanced ingredients only found in group dungeons. That is why we're going to not bother unlocking this for now. This will be done much later with Tomes and much faster. This is the part that's going to take you three hours, but if you do it here, you won't have to be camping nodes when you get out into the main game. It is so much faster to do it here than it is on the live servers, especially on launch week or launch month. Alright, so what you're going to do is gather wood, wood uh, logs, you're going to be gathering hide from animals, you're going to be gathering fiber from plants, and ores from the mining nodes. Then you're going to, whenever your uh, carry weight, which is right up here in the top right, you can see I'm at 115%. When it's over 100, you just return to town and use these refining stations, which you learned how to do earlier. And then you're going to refine all of them into metal bars, into leather hide, wooden planks, and fiber, or I'm sorry, cloth uh, sheets. Once you do that, to you'll still be overweight. So you have to come over here to the crafting areas. And let me hide the text so I can show you. And here's what you're going to craft. You can also, I'll, I'll pop it back up on screen in a sec here. But you're going to be crafting. Uh, now, here's the thing. There's multiple tabs on these crafting stations. It's not just swords and shields. Click this helmet icon and you can craft novices soldier armor. Over here, you'll be crafting novices mercenary jackets and mercenary hoods. Because you'll be wearing these and there is a chance that you craft them at a higher quality. So just kind of min-max both. It, it just helps you out early game. You won't be using it for too long. And then down here, you'll be crafting Novice's Scholar Sandals. Again, because we're, this is what we'll be wearing. So you can see here, I got an outstanding Novice's Scholar Sandals. But I only managed to uh, get a just a good quality mercenary jacket. This is not important. But what you need to do is you need to continue to craft these, gather these, and refine these until you meet the following criteria. You're going to need 20% of journeyman refining on all of the resources and 20% of the crafting journeyman on all of the crafting nodes. 
So uh, in order to do that, uh, like I said, you just keep at it. And then when you have these extra armors, you're still going to be overweight. So you have to come over here to the market and then you click the sell tab right over here. And then you would find the armor, you would click sell and then just click sell. Uh, and the armor, uh, like doing this for three hours, you're going to be getting about 4,044 silver, which is not bad, but this guy does not involve spending your silver at all, so, uh, it's just, it's just, it's just helpful. This is the only way to level up these to journeymen early, early, early on. So let me show you what it looks like on the Destiny board, okay? So we have, uh, unlocked, like I said earlier, the journeyman warrior to 20%, so that we can immediately level it up. You have, uh, right down here, your gathering. Now, you won't have fisherman or courier. You can't do those on Tutorial Island. But we do have 20 per You'll have way more than 20% because you want to get refining. So, we're at least halfway on fiber. Uh, you know, a little under halfway on ore, animal skinning, and lumberjack. So, all we can level these up immediately, which what it allows us to do is immediately start using Tier 3 tools. On Refiner, you can see here that we have Fiber Weaver above 20%, Ore Smelter above 20, Hide Tanner above 20, and Wood Planner above, um, Planer, I'm sorry, that's Wood Planer, because you're making wood planes, not, pl it, it, should it be Planer? I don't know, maybe it's a typo, but regardless, it's all at 20%, this one's 20% exact, um, now, like I said, you won't be able to do Stone Cutter on Totoro Island, so don't worry about it. Because you're crafting bags as well, which I, I do mention on the screen, you need to be crafting novices bags, which is right over here at Journeyman Toolmaker. Uh, and what this unlocks at Tier 3 um, is you can craft Tier 3 bagscapes, but most importantly, this is very important, you can craft Tier 3 gathering gear. So we're going to absolutely need that to advance to the next step. And then following along here, uh, we have the Mage Crafting Unlocked, which is what we will be using to get our boots later on. Super important stuff. We have the Hunter's Lodge Crafter Unlocked, and this is how we're going to be able to craft our armor, our helmet, and we'll be using a torch for now. Uh, that's just an offhand weapon that increases our attack speed and lowers our cooldown. Very nice to have early on. And then up here, we have the Warrior Unlocked, so we will be able to craft Tier 3 Battle Axes. And if, if you want to use a shield, you can, but the torch is much better, so don't worry too much about that. Very important before you leave Tutorial Island, take at least 120 to 150 of every refined resource. Okay, with a bag and with, you know, boots and everything, this puts me at 115% overweight. The reason we want these refined resources is we're going to use these to craft our Tier 3 gear much faster, because once we get out into the main world, Every resource node is going to be mega camped and taken. So at this point, I can now leave to go to the mainland, or I can stay and level up more stuff if you want to be a completionist. But this this will take you three hours to do. So make sure you have you don't have to rush it. You you can just chip away at, at it if you can only play thirty minutes a day. You know, obviously you're going to be slightly behind everyone else, and you could possibly start using the market when things normalize. But if you're rushing like everyone else, and you're a solo player, and you don't want to do dangerous zones, this is the way to go. This is what I would be doing if I played on East. Now, an old strategy is to buy a bunch of mules for three silver from the market of Totoro Island and take those with you. This is unnecessary on the East Asia server because you can buy mules from the markets anyway. From the starter markets and so on. Not from players, but from NPCs. Uh, this is uh, just set up so that players can much easier you know, have, have a good time, like if they get killed in the black zone, they don't have to make a new character to get mules if someone controls the market or not. Also, according to Sandbox Interactive, you will be able to buy starter weapons and gear also from the market, so having this over 4,000 silver from mob grinding and selling crafted equipment is going to help you with that. So, once we complete Tutorial Island, my choice of where you should go is called Step Cross. The reason why is this is with the town of Bridgewatch, which will give you access to metal, leather, it will also, it neighbors an area with wood, and you will also have access to cloth. So notice that I've just passed this doorway and it's open, but if I turn back around, it's still open, right? And, uh, well, hold on, let's go down this second part of stairs, just to show you, we're down here. We go back up, guess what, it, it, it crumbled, it collapsed, we can't go back. We're, we're locked out of Tutorial Island forever, so you want, you want to make sure to get all of this done before you leave. Um, so, in order to select Step Cross, you're going to talk to this NPC and accept the quest. 
And then it's saying we have unclaimed rewards. So I'm going to hit OK. And we have a registration reward. OK, that's because this is a brand new account. Let's see what we got. Uh, let's see. We've attached some non-tradable Tomes of Insight, which it looks like I can't pick them up because I'm still on Totoro Island. Anyway, so now here's where you choose, okay? Choose the bottom middle one. This is called Step Cross. You can click this circle or you can click this drop-down menu. And like I said, the reason why is this is a nice area where you have metal, you have uh, hide, and you have cloth. And then next door is where wood is. You can get to wood very quickly. To your left is stone if you want to meddle with that later, but you don't need stone to progress this character or this build or this guide. So we're going to step cross. That is one of the better starting zones. It's also one I'm very familiar with, and I encourage players to, to be at because it's one of the better refining places in the game. Now we can check our mail and get these tomes. That's going to give us 5,000 experience later on. That's only if you're a new account, which this is. Now at this point in the game, all right, you don't talk to this gentleman here with the question mark. This will start your three-day premium when you talk to this guy next. We don't want to do that yet. First up, let's correct your options and settings. So we're going to go to game settings and just copy what I have, okay? Of course, you, you can you can leave things like month, day, year. You know, that's fine. That's America mode. Uh, turn off camera shake. This is very important because if you are in a big fight or around a lot of players and they start casting certain spells... You won't be able to see anything unless you have, like, Dragon Ball Z vision or something, okay? Uh, I also uh, have automatically pick up silver, very important. And uh, turn off buying items at full stack. Also, keep warning before entering PvP areas always checked on. Because if a player who is hostile, what they can do is they can use movement impairing or, you know, knockback abilities to knock you into a PvP zone and possibly kill you and take your stuff. So keep this on. If you have the warning on, you won't zone into a dangerous zone. Also, uh, for PvP purposes, you should turn skins off um, whenever you are... Uh, you should only show skins in safe zones. So just copy my settings for overcharge. This is for way later, don't worry about this, but I leave it all on. I honestly have never overcharged because it, it's a chance to break your gear. If you stream, you can turn this on. It will just star out where you're located. Um, if you're like playing in a public donut shop and you don't want someone to like in real life stream snipe you, I guess, I guess turn it on, whatever. For graphics, um, now here's the thing. If you don't limit your frame rate and you have a beast of a machine, this will just nuke your graphics card. It will, it will run hot, your fans will start blasting, so make sure to turn your, your frame limit down. I don't leave it at 60 because it'll dip to 59. I just leave it at 120 because it looks nice. Uh, I don't use V-Sync. For resolution, there is a way to get a wider view angle, but I don't personally do it because it I, I hate it. I don't like that. Um, also, as far as visual quality, here's what I use to be able to see spells the best, okay? Prefab Ultra, Shadow Ultra, Shadow Ul Distance Ultra, Animation Quality High, Screen Space Ambit Occlusion Ultra, Anti-Aliasing High, Anti-Sotropic uh, Texture Filtering, Shaders are automatically set to high. Show effects all. Number of shadow cascades high. Shadows high. And then also down here, you also want to do obscure to character highlighting. This is very important. What this does, it lets you see enemy mobs and enemy players hiding behind objects. I'm going to try to show you just real quick. Like if I walk behind this, you can see this yellow highlight around my character. But you can also see it around other players. And creatures and monsters and dungeons it's super super important like right now we can see that there's a there's like a little beaver a, a marmot behind these crates but you wouldn't be able to see it with that option turned off okay because he's like it looks like he's kind of underground see there's another one behind this tent but if we go to the option setting and we turn that off they're invisible you won't know they're there unless you put your point your mouse over them you need to have this on because you don't want players jumping you window animations this i have this off because it's super annoying and the, re the main reason you want window animations off is there are times in the game where you need to loot items faster than other players. So with window animations on, this is what happens when you open a window. You see this little zoom effect? It's taking extra frames for me to see my inventory. When I click on a chest to loot, everyone, like 20 people, will be looting a chest all at once. And you need to click as fast as possible. So if this window is doing this, it's you're at a disadvantage. So you want to turn window animations off so it looks like this. It's instant. That way you can immediately click all the items and loot it for yourself. Very important. Again, camera shake, keep that off. Animated vegetation, this is new. 
Um, you might have to turn this off if your computer is really bad, but it just looks nice. Audio. You want to make sure that you have music on at some point. You don't need to have it blasting, but music will tell you if there is a boss monster nearby. This is very important to have always on. Sound effects, you want this on, and, and you want it a little bit higher than everything else so that you can hear portal whizzing. You can hear player mounts, player footsteps. Uh, you can hear players from off screen beyond nameplate visual range, which means uh, if an enemy hostile player is within your nameplate range, you will see their name on the side of your screen, but you can't see them. When their nameplate disappears, it means they're too far away, but you can still hear them running around and casting spells. So it's very important that you have sound on. Ambience, you don't need. There's no in-game reason to ever have ambience on. It's cool to have, but it gets annoying. I, I have it off. Interface, I like to scale my HUD down so that I can see more enemy nameplates around me. Some players play this uh, at 100, which is it like you're eating more of your, your screens like... Um, I don't know what to call it, like uh, retail, not retail value, but real estate, your screen real estate. So you want to keep it low, okay? And you can change the spells wherever you want. You know, you can put it on the right side, you can put it on the bottom, it doesn't matter. It's just whatever you prefer. Speech bubbles, because I'm not always looking at the chat, and this is just nice when you see players communicate. If you are doing zergs, you want speech bubbles on because you want to see shot callers uh, spamming commands. Sometimes they can't do it through voice chat. Sometimes they're giving commands to people not in a Discord, so this is important to have on. All right. Activity pop up on login, that's fine. Harvestable tooltip is fine for islands. Damage numbers, you you really don't need to have only player related damage numbers. It's nice to see when enemies are chunking you for huge amounts of damage. Uh, mob health bar is very important to know what's weak and about to die so you can take out targets more efficiently. Or if you don't have this on and, and someone's fighting a mob at like one health, you just help them kill it without uh, getting any credit. But if someone is at a mob is at full health and you know you can steal that mob, well, having health bars on will tell you that. Target markers are important so that you can see anything that your shot callers are putting over your head or your targets in ganking groups. Most transports will be marked with an icon and then you will just kill that icon. Numeric spell cooldown timers is basically your abilities down here. So if I cast a spell, I have 12, 11, 10, 9. This is very important so you, you don't have to look at the the, um, the the shade here like a clock. You can just look at the number and immediately know that information. Enemy damage, ally damage, heals. You want to show all this. Name tags. You can turn this on or off. I, I like to see everything. You want big name tag type. If you have this to small... Yes, it, it's prettier, but it's harder to see hostile players, so always keep it big. You also, you must have this on. This is absolutely important. The most important thing is show off-screen name tags. You need this on at all times, okay? You want to be able to see allied players and, and other players, too. Now, party interface. This is if you if you do parties. I'm a solo player, so I don't really bother. Uh, role priority is um, tank DPS. It, it just sorts players based on priority. You would think healer would like be at the top, but whatever. <laughs> and uh, then you you can show mount health. Uh, this is for raids and and rolls. Mount health will be displayed normally anyway. Target symbols again. This is for raiding. Um, and then open world tooltips. You uh, you generally want all of these on so you don't get accidentally knocked. And alternative input methods. Um, what this does is um, just have it on because it runs smoother, I guess. It doesn't, it's not a big deal though. Now controls, I use iron. I like, I like the color of iron. I think crystal is distracting. Gold is, I don't know. I just use iron. It's whatever. Mouse controls. A lot of people will say that you should use RTS like controls. Um, and what this does is you can left click someone and not attack them. And it's, it's pretty handy if you want to inspect someone. I'm too used to classic because I've been doing it for years that I cannot switch. But if you're brand new to this game, then get you getting used to RTS controls is nice because it's one extra input to start auto attacking. It's bad for PvE, but for PvP it's great because you don't want to attack someone and put yourself in combat by just inspecting them. Like if I'm if I'm a ranged attacker and I want to inspect this guy and we're we're hostile, just left clicking him uh, will uh, start attacking him and put me in combat so I can't run away from him. Whereas RTS controls will allow you to click on him without attacking. Uh, you can also toggle on double press to attack. Again, that just gets that's just doubling your inputs. It sucks. Uh, auto target aggressor if you have no one selected and an enemy mob hits you uh, this will automatically target them it makes fighting a lot easier i recommend having it on because sometimes you're like 
caught up in between mounts and just terrain and you can't see what's attacking you. But if an enemy hits you, you can push spacebar and begin auto-attacking them and it's just easy. Force combat mode, turn this off so that you can loot while in combat. Super important for stealing loot, ratting, and other things. Gamepad, I don't have any experience with using a controller. Social, uh, again, you can. this is all preferable, but one thing that I recommend is you go to general, and I'm going to do this right now because this is a new account, and we're going to turn off looking for group chat. You might want to have this on for, for the brand new server, but this is all just hardcore expedition spam, which requires max tier gear, and it's just really elitist, so I just turn it off. That's just me personally, though. Key bindings. There is one key binding that's super, super important, and that is auto-run. You really want an auto-run button here. Uh, so, I, I, everything is default for me. I have not changed any of this stuff, but auto-run is not currently bound. So, I bind it to the button above the tab key. That's my favorite auto-run button. Okay, so let's go down here to auto-run. I have it at back quote. That's the button to the left of the one key. Alright, so what auto-run does is I can point my cursor in a direction... Push my auto run key and I will continue to run in that direction indefinitely. It's super easy to run across a zone and does not cramp my hand. If you push the button again, you will stop running after reaching that destination. Or you can just right click to cancel it. It's really, really, really handy. Uh, I recommend everyone learn to use auto run. Alright. And then you could bind like emotes, I guess. Or you like if you're a, a raid shot caller, you can... Um... Oh, I did rebind this. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 0 are my... Uh, like, I can select myself here, which is, uh, well, I'll just select someone else, and then I can put a raid marker over them, which I can't do, um, in safe zones, but whatever, you get the point. So I can put a little marker over it to, like, tell someone else to attack it or whatever. Finally, for game settings, notifications, uh, you, uh, like, entering a, a yellow zone, I, I have that as don't show again. Uh, I have don't show again for unselected spells, bank warning, auction house warning, completed items in marketplace, adventurer's challenge, and corrupted dungeon tutorial. I don't need those because they just waste time every time you do a corrupted dungeon. Uh, they're not important for, you know, keeping you safe if someone tries to pull you into a dangerous zone. So that is the settings. Alright, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the tool crafter, uh, which is right here. It's like a little hammer and a spike looking thing. It's called Journeyman's Toolmaker. We're going to go here and craft Tier 2 Gathering Tools. We're going to take the Novice's Pickaxe, and we're going to craft at least two of them. Okay, there we go. So craft two. Craft two sickles. Craft two axes. And the reason we're crafting two is so that you don't have to return and repair as often. Craft two skinning knives, and then two stone hammers. All right, do not craft the demolition hammer. And so now what you can do is you can actually vendor... Um, or break down your beginner's items, which, or you can just toss them because they're pretty worthless. To do that, you're going to go here to the Journeyman's Repair Station. So we're going to mosey on up over here now. Not that one, right here. And you can just go to Salvage and drop all your Tier 1 stuff. Not not your core, your hammers. Uh, though, te now you, you can do Stone Hammers because we can already use the Tier 2 Stone Hammer. So we... We don't need those. We don't need any of the tier 1 tools, so go ahead and just break all that down. That's fine. And what you're going to do now is in the center here is a bank. Now, this chest is not shared with other players. This is a private chest just for you. If you put stuff in here, other players cannot take it away. What you're going to do is you're going to keep your... This is the sickle. You're going to keep the skinning knife and the pickaxe. But you can put everything else in here for now, including all these other tier 2 materials. And what you're going to do is now, whenever you have free time, like I'm saying that you have like the next two to three days off, you don't have to go to work, you don't have family obligations, you don't have, you know, like a family member or school or work or anything. You have a lot of, lot of free time. You're going to talk to this guy and complete the quest and then accept the next one. And then you're going to talk to this guy and he will begin your free three days of premium. There we go. We now have three days of premium. So we're going to gain extra fame, which is experience points for doing everything. We're going to be able to gather at a much faster rate. Uh, the silver we pick up will be more. But most importantly, when we open the destiny board, we have been given 100 learning points, which will allow us to advance to tier three on all of those things I talked about earlier. So, we're going to go here to Journeyman Warrior, and then we're going to use two learning points to learn it. This unlocks Tier 3 weapons and the shield. Very cool. 
All right, next up, we're going to just swing along here and unlock the Gathering now. So we're going to unlock Fiber Harvester and Ore Miner and Animal Skinner and Lumberjack. There we go. Very cool. Now we go down here to the refining and we're going to unlock all of the refining. And yes, this will eat up a lot of your learning points. That's fine. You're going to be getting 30 of these a day for the next 30 days. Afterwards, you'll receive 10 a day. All right, now we have the bag crafter. It's already level three. Uh, that's why we can uh, we can actually craft these tier three tools as soon as we get the materials and we can refine the materials because we have the refining unlocked. This will allow us to craft tier four stuff relatively quickly. And that is pretty much it for now, uh, because everything else is already unlocked. We can also wear tier three equipment and craft the tier three equipment we need because you won't really be able to get the tier three equipment until you go out and harvest it. So we're now going to leave through one of these three spots. Um, don't don't go to Goffer's Knoll because this is well, you can go here for wood, but it's not efficient. There are barely any trees in this zone, so don't go here. You can go here for more efficient metal if you need to, but I recommend going either to Fractured Ground or Prospector's Hope. And what you're going to do is you're just going to ride around and kill things and gather Tier 2 and Tier 3 materials. Gather everything you possibly can. So let's go do that right now. Now you'll notice on this map we have refining stations for when we gather. This is really, really handy so we can immediately start crafting our Tier 3 items. Just ride around, kill mobs, and gather. That's all you'll be doing for a while until you unlock Tier 4. You can even gather the Tier 2 materials. That's completely fine. You'll notice that you'll be gathering these much faster because you have a higher tier of tool. These will sell for money later, and they're always valuable. And because these nodes will be camped on the Asia server when it launches, if you see it, you gotta grab it. It's very important that you just go out and grab as much as possible. So I'm going to go and do that for a little while. So tier three nodes will have a green color. Now mobs, when you click on them, it's going to show you the tier of the mob. So after I harvest this tin, of course, I'm going to kill this moa bird and we're going to skin it because uh, that's how you get skins. So when I click on the bird to kill it, you'll see three Roman numerals here at the top. That means it's a tier three animal and they're pretty easy to kill. Um, you're not going to have gathering gear for quite a while on the new server, so you just have to gather without it. So for now, we're just going to skin, mine, and pick up fiber. Now, you it's going to be very important that you learn how mob tagging works. It's not the person that hits the mob first. It's the person that deals the most damage to the mob. So when another player is encroaching on your territory and attacking mobs, you need to deal as much damage to as many mobs as possible and if you do, for the next two minutes, they cannot skin your animals. They can't loot the silver or the items that drop. Very important to just go all out on the beasts. To be more efficient, make sure that you pull enemies together before fighting them. You can just run at them with your mount. And hopefully this one doesn't leash. There we go. We got three now. So when we do our area of effect attacks, it is way more efficient. We're dealing, we're killing mobs so much faster. And then remember, because we killed these, we can we have two minutes to skin them, so we don't have to we don't have to rush to skin these. We got two entire minutes. And now I can go and pull this cat as well, which I should have just stayed unmounted, so I kept my charges. But it's fine, you know, it's it's whatever. So there we go. Now we have four mobs to skin instead of killing them one at a time, because the the faster you can tag and down mobs, the faster you will gain resources over other players. And I am filming on West, which is super dead there's 11 players here you're probably going to look down and see this number in the high 50s to 60s to possibly 100 to 200 i don't know how busy the east asia server will be on launch but it will be busy now to refine your tier 3 raw materials you'll need your tier 2 refined materials so to make neat cloth which is tier 3 you'll need your simple cloth and your flax there we go simple as so here's what we'll be crafting. Make a tier 3 bag, there we go, and pop that bad boy on. This is going to let you gather more materials for longer. This holds 42 kilograms. Our tier 2 bag only holds 24. It's It doubles our carrying capacity from the bag. Very, very good stuff. We're going to go over now to the mage tower and craft ourselves some cloth boots. This will also increase our carry weight. Very important stuff. So I'm going to click the armor here. And then we're going to go ahead and then craft one of these. Journeyman Scholar Sandals. Awesome stuff. Now, it says we can't wear it yet. 
And that is because we have we didn't use our learning point on Journeyman Cloth Armor Fighter, which we'll, we'll do now. Only costed one learning point, and now we can put on the tier 3 boots. And you can toggle carry weight, or you can toggle more damage. I'm going to toggle more damage for now, um, because it'll help me kill mobs faster. Now we go over to the... Um, I don't think I have wood yet, but um, essentially... Uh, what is it? Yeah, I need, I need to go get me some wood, which I have not done. Like I said, you can go to Goffer's Knoll and there'll be wood. It's very sparse. Or you can travel several zones. This will only take you about 7 to 10 minutes to Pine Copes and just do wood. You can also pick up leather here. And you can start leveling your, uh, your stone if you want to. But uh, it's not really recommended. It's up to you how you want to do this. But for now, let's go to the Hunter's Lodge and get our armor and helmet. So here we go, we'll get the Mercenary Jacket, buy that. Now, if I click this, you'll see it's red, I can't equip it. But if I go to Item Equipable and click that, it takes us right to the part of the uh, Destiny Board so we can learn Journeyman Leather Armor Fighter, allowing us to put that on. Now we have Tier 3 Armor, which is awesome. And we can also craft the Helmet, the Mercenary Hood. Which, because it's armor, we can just put that on right away. And uh, there we go. So we are all set almost. We can also do our offhand. Let's see. I believe we can do the offhand. Uh, torch. Well, I don't have wood for torch. We'll do that later. Also at the toolmaker, you don't have to do this unless you're just OCD, but you can craft a tier 3 cape. It's You're not really going to need the mana. It just gives you additional energy and regeneration for your energy. It really does not nothing else. There's really no point to do it. Before you set back out, make sure that you repair your gear. This is where that silver is going to come in super handy. You're going to hit repair all. It's a little pricey, and that's fine. You can also salvage your old tier 2 gear if you want to get some of that silver back. You can see if I salvage my tier 2 armor, I do get 48 silver and some tier 1 leather, which is pretty useless. But, um, you know, go ahead and just salvage it if you want to. There's no reason to keep it at this point. Also, don't forget your axe, because we need our axes to chop trees. And remember, even though you can't skin these mobs, you should still kill them because they give decent fame and silver. And you need to fame up your weapons and equipment and your reaver level, which will allow you to go to higher tier zones and not take tremendous amounts of damage. So make sure to kill every mob you see. You see, that one mob dropped 221 silver. So if I kill three of those, that would suffice for that entire repair bill. For the East Asia server, these are solo random dungeons. You're not going to get almost any loot in these on launch day because there's no black market trades happening and everyone is going to pile into these things thinking they're really good. They're not. They're actually much worse fame and silver than killing open world mobs. You actually gimp yourself. I'll show you. Like, these are enchanted dungeons. This is a tier 3.2. It's a blue butterfly. That means that the mobs in here are much harder and they give you much better rewards. I'll go kill a mob real quick and show you they're not going to drop 220 silver. They're not going to give you good fame, unless there's already someone in here clearing it, which they're... Well, okay, here we go. So this is a baby mob. These don't count. I'll show you what they reward as well. It's not much. So we killed this mob. We got 150... We got 14 silver. Okay, 14. We have to kill like 20 of those to get the same amount. This is a really hard pull for a tier 2 geared player, but so I'm going to really give it my all. Uh... I have to interrupt these <laughs> as much as possible. And kill one healer, 487, and the silver is only 58. Remember, this is a higher enchanted dungeon that gives an additional 36% extra rewards. So if these enchanted dungeons are only giving one-fourth the rewards of an open world mob, you're farming four times less efficiently. So do not do these dungeons. Don't do them at all. So I just got Adept Reaver, and what this does, what Reaver is, okay, is this allows me now to go to tier 4 zones and not take ad ad additional damage. So here is the Reaver, okay, it, on your destiny board, you just go left, and then you keep going left on this thicker line. So Journeyman Reaver is tier 3 zones, you'll get that in the tutorial island. Then you have Adept Reaver, so we can now go to tier 4 zones, and we deal additional damage, and we have additional defense. Whereas if we go to a tier 5 zone, we do not have additional damage or defense, so that means we will be slapped around, and it's still possible to kill higher tier enemies even without the Reaver. It's just not efficient, especially as a melee build. Uh, it's mostly for mages. So just continue to ride around and uh, just kill mobs. And uh, again, uh, you know, just find some trees, kill mobs, gather. That's what you're going to be doing for the next 
probably the rest of your day, essentially. Also, uh, the tier 3 trees are very rare in the Martlock region, so this is a chestnut. It's actually been harvested by someone, believe it or not. So we're going to need a bunch of these. That's why I recommend that you just go to the Limhurst area. This is a, a very thick forest filled with trees. Uh, much more efficient than coming here to Noffer's... Goffer's Knoll. Unlike other games, you can actually steal, not really exactly steal nodes, but you can mine or harvest the same node as another player. Just note that if there's only one charge on it and they started before you, they will finish before you, and therefore you won't get anything for the time that you spent harvesting it. Multiple people on one node does not harvest faster for everyone, only the person, like, it's hard to explain, okay? I'm gonna follow this guy and see if he uh, starts mining something so I can show you. No, he's gonna go into a dungeon? Uh, anyway, the, the point is, is that if two people are mining the same node, you only get one click of that node at a time. I know that sounds confusing, but essentially, like, say there's three charges on a node. I'll show you right now. There's three charges, and, and two people are mining this. It'll go from six to nine to three to nine, and then whoever started first will get that last dink. Now, if you have higher tier gathering gear or higher specialization in gathering, you will gather much, much faster which uh, means you can steal pretty much the entire node before anyone else can touch it. And because gathering is the surefire way to make money in this game, it's always good to have a high level of gathering. Later on, we'll get gather gear as the server matures, but for now, we need to get our tier 3 equipment. So as you do activities, you'll see this pop-up at its Tome of Insight Unlocked. If you go over here to the Daily Bonus, you uh, if you finish the da Daily Bonus, you get 50,000 challenge points once per day, once per reset, rather. And you can claim this 10,000, uh, or I'm sorry, this is a Tome of Insight worth 10,000 fame. We're going to save this until we have a full suit of Tier 3 armor, which will let us skip to Tier 4. But until then, keep gathering. Now that you've gotten the wood and refined it, well, let's go finish our gearing up. So that the sooner we can equip the Battle Axe, the sooner we can start leveling up. So head to the Warrior's Forge. We're going to craft our Journeyman's Battle Axe. I forgot to grab metal out of my chest here. So there we go, we got metal now, and go ahead and craft that bad boy. There we go, oh, and I got a freaking excellent, that's super lucky. That is way more power than what I need at the start. And you can select if you just wanna kill mobs one at a time, deadly chop would be nice, uh, adrenaline boost gives you more auto attack damage. I like adrenaline boost. You should really get used to using adrenaline boost because it does boost the damage of all of your other abilities. All right, and then finally, we do need the torch, which I don't remember what it takes to craft the torch. Uh, let's see, that is not where the torch is. It is in the Hunter's Lodge, yes. Over here with the bows. Okay, torch is cloth, which we have plenty of in our stash. I should have just grabbed everything, but it's fine. And we're going to go ahead and replace our shield with a torch now, and there's the cloth. Awesome stuff. After this, we will now replace our our gathering tools. Uh, let's see, grab the torch, craft one, and then make sure we can equip it by... Um, well, we have to use a bow, <laughs> so we'll do that later. We, we It's not super important right now, but um, j just equip a tier 2 bow and go kill some things. The bow is pretty strong. It, it, because you're in the tier 3 zones now, or you can even take it to tier 4 zones, uh, we can do that to unlock the torch. It's just good to have one right now. So, let's go over here to the Toolmaker and get our Tier 3 tools. So, let's see, Tier 3 tools we have... Uh, do I have everything on me? I might have to go gather some more. Let's see, there's some leather, and... Yeah, we're all set. Okay, let's see what tools we can get. Essentially, you just want one of each. Um, I would say, and we'll start with Skinner because that one takes the longest. And then uh, Axe also can take a while. Sickle, uh, that's the zone we're in. Let's see, we got the... We don't have enough wood, so I got... Or metal. I gotta go mine more metal. And we can get the pickaxe. And then, uh, you don't need the stone hammer right now. And you definitely... Like, don't do... Don't bother with fishing. Uh, don't bother with demolition hammer. Uh, bots are going to swarm fishing. That's gonna make it completely worthless. So don't even worry about fishing. Uh, but let's see. We have the sickle. We have... We just need the axe. So we need metal for that one. We just need two more bars. I could have just mined a little bit more. <laughs> So remember just a bit ago when I was complaining that I couldn't equip the torch? Here's the fast way to do it. Equip your bow. It doesn't matter what skill you have. And remember that tome that gives us 10,000 fame? Go ahead and pop that. There we go. Now we're a journeyman hunter. 
and we can put on the torch. So there we go. Now we're full tier three. We have the bag, the cape. We have all the armors and boots, offhand and weapon. We don't have potions, and we don't have any higher tier food. Potions are grown by premium characters. You need premium for that. You need uh, premium for a personal island to grow crops to craft food. So those will be unavailable to us. Also, people that are on advanced mounts, that's another thing that is grown on islands. You can see that there is a saddler here in town, which requires, you know, a grown horse or a grown ox plus wood or leather to saddle them to make a riding horse or a transport ox. I'm going to recommend that uh, once the market has these available, they're going to be expensive as hell, especially on uh, like the first few days. Let the economy die down a bit and get yourself an ox as soon as you can, but don't overpay for it. Um, that again, horses are grown on islands and oxes grown on islands. You need premium for those, so don't worry about it. Now I'm just going to salvage all my tier two stuff, and there we go. Get some resources and some money back. Uh, tier two sword. Don't need that. Don't need those either. And there we go. Now we have some nice resources because we are now a tier four reaver. And we have all tier 3 gathering gear. Uh, you can also double down and get at least two of these, so you don't have to repair as often. That's up to you. It's time to go to the main city. We're, we're basically done here. So we're just going to carry everything we have, and we are overweight. It's going to take a little while. We don't we don't need to hang out here anymore. We're, we're pr pretty much done, so. So let's go to Bridgewatch, the main city. And when you get there, if you're one of the earlier players to get there... It is going to be desolate. There's not going to be crafting stations or anything because guilds will not have pulled enough money. Depending on how the cash shop goes, someone might whale a few stalls or stations. But we just need to live in Bridgewatch because we're going to start farming Tier 4 and Tier 5 zones right away. Which is going to give us a ton of silver and fame. And we will have way more access to more resources. Now... Uh, if, you, if you've if you been running around these Tier 3 zones and you think that there's barely enough resources and they're being mega camped, in Tier 4 and Tier 5 zones, there are far, far more resources to harvest and gather and more mobs to kill and the rewards are so much better. So we don't ever need to come back to these Tier 3 zones ever again. And uh, most players that I have spectated on Twitch and just watched them play, they spend two to three weeks in a Tier 3 zone not knowing how to progress or what to do. I just got you to tier 3 with pretty much every gathering tool that you'll need for now in under like 5 hours. Like your very first day of playing without using the market or relying on other players or an established economy. So you can see here on the map we're at Fractured Ground. We're going to Bridge Watch and uh, we're going to stash our stuff there and we're going to operate out of... This is called a main royal city. And we're going to operate out of there for a while. Also, you'll notice I did not trash my Tier 2 Stone Hammers. That is because I have not unlocked Tier 3 Stone Hammer. So, yeah, there you go. So, main cities are a little bit different. They're a lot bigger. The bank is down here in a different zone, and the market is here. So, what I suggest that you do now for the next day is you simply gather and you do the same exact things. The way that you gather to unlock Tier 3 and Tier 3 Refining, you'll do the same thing for Tier 4 in tier 4 zone. So let's just stash everything for now and uh, get back out there and do some mob grinding and some gathering. And now that we have our axe, our mob grinding is going to be very, very efficient and way faster than with those tier 2 swords. So if you look at the map, we have a tier 4 zone to our left. Uh, there is a tier 4 zone uh, or tier 4 zone to our bottom right and then a tier 5 zone to our top right. We don't want to go to the tier 5 zone yet. We want to continue to stay in the Tier 4 zones until we unlock Expert Reaver, which we are currently 20%. Uh, you cannot use learning points to advance this, by the way. Also, check back every once in a while to the Faction Enlistment Vendor and see if you can enlist. You can see that I do not have Expert Adventurer uh, unlocked on the Destiny board yet. You get Ad Expert Adventurer. It's if you go up, right now I have Journeyman Adventurer, and then here is Adept Adventurer. And then we have Expert Adventurer. So once I have this unlocked, allowing me to wear like Tier 5 bags and use Tier 5 capes and mounts, then come here and flag up because it will earn you bonus points, which will allow you to buy gear and chests, which will massively, massively increase your fame and silver generation. So for now, we're going to go to a Tier 4 zone and do the exact same thing that we've been doing, which is killing mobs and gathering nodes. Because we have Tier 3 tools, we can now gather Tier 4 resources. 
These resources, whoa, that's way zoomed in. These resources are a blue color. Also, avoid this area. This is for groups of players. Uh, later on, on your account's life, you will be able to solo this entire thing and collect all the loot and treasures and go into the dungeon and farm an insane amount of fame per hour. But right now, we are far too weak. Uh, also, if you see any bodies on the ground, go ahead and loot them. And now, some mobs are just going to be very weak. Uh, but you can kill these very, very quickly, and I actually like the second Q ability, but we don't unlock Rending Spin until later on, which is... Well, I, I gotta go to the Tier 4 node here. Where's the axes at? Axes, uh, let's see. Rending Spin will unlock at level 3, and we're level 0 on Axe Fighter. That's fine. So, uh, as you kill things, you'll unlock this. This is just an AoE attack that attacks around you. It does deal less damage, but it, it, it is, you know... A circular attack. It's very nice to have. So continue to gather everything, including the tier 3 nodes, including the tier 4 nodes, which you will run into. You can see right now there's 57 players in, in here. There's going to be way more on the Asia server, but if you get here relatively quickly, most people won't be crafting. Uh, so unless they have a guild backing them up or feeding them or a guild craftsman, they won't be able to gather the tier 4 materials. So it's basically all for you, and you'll have tier 3 equipment. Most people are going to be running around in tier 2 equipment. This, is, The exception is the Sweat Lords uh, that immediately go to the Black Zone. This guide is for people that don't want to lose gear, because as a solo player, the honest truth of this game is if you go to a Black Zone as a solo, you will most likely die to groups of players. Horrible, horrible stuff. Also, don't do the dungeons. The dungeons are not worth doing. Uh, open world mobs are the way to go. So, again, we're just going to continue to gather and refine and craft until we unlock the Tier 4 versions. And at that point, you basically essentially specialize and you just start gathering one resource and then using the market to advance your gear. And because you're gathering, because you're killing mobs, you're continuously growing stronger. Look at that, it's already dead. Make sure to pick up that silver too. Now, these are little baby mobs. There's sometimes bigger and juicier mobs. Which I would love to find. I still haven't seen a tier 4 node, which is weird. But yeah, here we go. Here's some tier 4 um, uh, giant stags. Now the great thing about these is that they actually have a chance to drop a baby. So uh, it's very, very nice to have. <laughs> uh, if they drop, it's like a 0.05% chance or something ridiculous. But this is how you get the tier 4 leather is the giant stags. If you get a baby drop, you're basically going to be super rich early on. So RNG plays a little bit here. Also, we have the Tier 4 Iron Nodes. Now, these do take longer to harvest, but once you unlock Tier 4 tools, they will harvest much faster. And you'll notice that sometimes mobs don't have a full stack. That is because another player came by earlier and harvested them, and it takes a little bit of time for them to regenerate all of their stacks. So here we go. That's just Tier 3. And we're going to continue to gather here for a while until we can upgrade. So let's give you a to-do list, a quest, whatever you want to call it. This is your to-do list. You're going to gather resources to unlock your tier 4 tools. To do that, you just continue to harvest here, and you'll use your learning points. As you can see here, I have Adept Fiber Harvester at 2%. I'm going to go ahead and grab that. Now, it, this will take you a while. This will take you several hours. But you have the three days of premium, so it's actually much faster than if you were to do this any later. This is important that you do this now while you have that three days of premium. Once this hits 20%, you'll, you'll use your learning points, which remember, you'll be getting 30 a day for the next three days. After that, you will receive 10 a day. So you're going to unlock your uh, Adept Fiber Harvester, your Ore Miner, your Animal Skinner, your Lumberjack. Uh, you can skip Courier and uh, Fishing, so don't worry about that. Fishing is a little different anyway. It's all one node. It's, it's super different. And then you're going to do the same thing for, um, for your... Uh, refining which you can see here i already have tier 4 refining unlocked so that's completely fine you're going to unlock you don't need to use learning points to learn tier 5 and, and beyond refining is basically free it's so easy to level up so don't use learning points on refining ever 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 and then for crafting you'll have to specialize uh in each of the tools here to craft the tier 4 tools okay so this is going to take a little bit of time, but essentially uh, you just, uh, as you craft like tier three tools, you will unlock the tier four variant. It doesn't take too long. After that, same thing with the bags. You, can, you craft the tier three bags, which will allow you to craft tier four bags. You can skip this if you want. 
You can just stay on a tier 3 bag. The tier 4 bag, it's not as big as the, a jump from tier 2 to tier 3 because you can just buy bags later on in like a week or two, you know? Uh, same with capes. You don't have to worry about capes. You can just buy um, faction capes later on, no problemo. Uh, for tome crafting, this is so you can craft a Moizak. You can also just buy that later on. Uh, but, uh, but what you do want to level up is you want to be able to start crafting your helmet. Once you unlock, uh, once you craft a bunch of these tier 3 helmets, you will unlock a bunch of tier 4 helmets, and you want to do Hunter Hood. This is the wep the, I'm sorry, the helmet you want to wear. So there you go. And then, of course, for your armor, initially, you want to do Mercenary Jacket, okay? Uh, but eventually, once the market stabilizes, you'll move on to Hellion Jacket, which is better, more armored, more HP, and in Life Steal Aura, which is just better overall. However, it is more expensive. All right, and then for your weapon, of course, you want to, well, I guess I missed, oh, there it is. So, Battle Axe Crafter, you craft a bunch of Tier 3 Battle Axes, this will unlock Tier 4, this unlocks very quickly, and then you just work on your Axe Crafting Specialist, um, but you don't need to continuously level up beyond that, you just need to be able to craft uh, Axes in general, and so that will allow you to get a leg up in the Arms Race, that is the early start. From there... Continue to gather and continue to kill mobs to earn silver and fame. And after three to four days, you will be uh, 100 mastery, which once we go down here, this is your mastery level. We go to axes at 100 mastery. You will be able to wear tier eight equipment. You'll have all the skills unlocked at tier six and above. You, all weapons will have all the abilities. Like you can see the battle axe here has a raging blades ability, but if you go to tier five, it's not there. So, basically, your goal is to raise enough money to buy Tier 6 from Guild Crafters at that point. Uh, same goes for your armors, capes, bags, etc., and eventually mounts. So, once you reach 100 Mastery, you also will be working towards your specialization, which I will show you once again. If you go to the Axe Tree, you will have specializations for each weapon. Once you have Battle Axe around level 50, level 60, level 70... And you're rocking at least like maybe a tier 6-3 or, you know, 7-2-8-1 uh, battle axe. You can solo group dungeons. You can solo outposts except for Limhurst. They're a little difficult. And the, the game becomes super easy at this point. You can actually, once you have a nice bankroll from all of your gathering, you will be able to go out into the mists and slay people with your build. You will just decimate the hell out of them. You will even be able to go into red zones and possibly fight off groups of gankers, depending on how geared or good they are. And same goes for the black zones, though black zones usually have swarms of 20 to 30 people. So they're, even with the best build and the best player in the game, you can still be outnumbered and destroyed. Uh, but with that said, just continue to kill open world mobs, and once you unlock the higher tier of Reaver, start going to tier 5 zones. If you want to play risky, you can go to red zones and, you know, start doing that kind of stuff. Uh, there we go. Killed that guy. 1,677 fame, 375 silver. It is very easy to level up once you kill these open world mobs enough. And like I said before, if you want a more in-depth guide for the West server or if the Asia East server has been live for at least a month or two, please reference this video. It is three hours long and it covers absolutely everything, including starting quests which I did not cover in this video because, honestly, on a new Fresh Start server, the starting quests are kind of a hindrance. There's no market to sell those items in. There's no point to do them. But this covers the same thing, gathering. This also covers advanced things like buying a guild island, which unfortunately now costs 1 million silver. And because of that, it's not advised unless you credit card swipe, unless you have friends that can bankroll you and feed you silver or until you have sold lots and lots and lots of gathering materials to earn that 1 million silver. Honestly, like earning premium at this point is a little bit more worth your money, depending on the price. I don't know the price of premium on Asia. I know on West, it's too damn high. Um, but essentially, the sooner you set up laborers, again, watch this video for all of the information. And also, you can search my channel. Just click my channel name here. And if you have any questions Same about anything. Okay, that was me. Uh, go to this little search bar, and you can type anything you want about the game. You want to know about food? I, I can't spell food, apparently. Uh, so, uh, look for ones that are labeled Albion Online, because I do other games as well, like New World and, and World of Warcraft, and even real-life cooking. 
Um, so you can also do things like laborers, and I just have I have videos on every single subject that will help you out. Uh, if they are outdated, it will say so in the title. It will be in parentheses. Uh, you can type gathering, you know, just whatever it is you want to learn about. You can even specialize and be like skinning. And uh, hold on, so I, I search skinning. We have ultimate skinning secrets, 30 minutes per day profit, cheat sheet skinning, skinning without premium. You're skinning wrong. Say like tier four extra hides worth the risk. Tier seven skinning. Okay, even other games if they're skinning in that too. But you can type whatever you want here. You can type like PvP build, and you'll get plenty of like PvP builds, even for Elden Ring if you're into that game. But just use the search function on my channel. I have 480 videos of this game, and I make I, I have been uploading daily for almost two years now. So th I have I am a knowledge base, okay? Uh, finally, just some final thoughts. Um, if this video helped you out and you want to support me, uh, there is a join button right down here. The join button is like on Twitch. When you subscribe to a channel, you pay five bucks. On YouTube, the five bucks is called channel membership, but it gets you access to private, more personal videos. But for my case, it's advanced guides for this game that are too good for the public. Market flipping techniques, ways to make way too much silver than the public should ever know about because... Those videos, I only have like 200-something channel members, and they only get like 40 to 50 views. Uh, if I put those videos out to the public, then everyone would do it, and it would ruin the market because I'm such a huge YouTuber. I actually get more views on YouTube um, than any other YouTuber for this game that mains this game. So not those checkmark channels with 700k subs that do a review once a year. Obviously, they get more. But the point is that I am a knowledge base. You can ask me anything in the questions. I read every comment. And um, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next videos if you want to learn more. Finally, I just want to mention a lot of people will ask, why am I so hated in the English chat or on Reddit? And that is because I am a huge in-game troll. This is a full loot PvP game, and I have ruined so many economies. I have caused tons of drama among certain guilds because I have ruined their economies and even shed light into their scamming practices. I'm also just a 4chaner at heart and just an old school troll from like the 90s era of the old school Wild West cowboy internet. And these uh, people that lean left and people that have political biases hate the hell out of me for my, my views and my opinions and my open-mindedness and my willingness to speak my mind regardless if it makes people hate me or not. I am very, I'm just an open book. I will say what I'm thinking. I will not sugarcoat things. Very to the point. I have literally changed the meta of this game many times over and ruined markets, ruined many, uh, like, uh, in-game mechanics that allow you to get an advantage over other people. I am the cause of several things being patched and updated for this game, so that's why Redditors hate my absolute guts, and they will use every slander tactic possible to try to say, that my videos are misleading or misguided or that my math is off, but I show all the math on my screen and explain and show in great detail everything that there is to show. So none of the videos are misleading. I literally make these videos for a future version of myself so that I can teach myself how to play if I put this game down for like 10 years and come back and don't remember anything. With that said, on the right side of your screen is a video you should absolutely click, so go ahead and click that. The algorithm knows exactly what you want. Uh, so you don't want to miss that, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, thank you for watching.